So previously I showed you the moment of inertia and how to derive that for some examples. Uh, and in this lesson, I'm gonna show you the parallel axis theorem, which is an extension of the, of how to calculate the moment of inertia of an object. So previously when we were calculating the moment of inertia, let's say we had a cylinder we would calculate the moment of inertia about an axis that went through the center of mass. But what if instead we wanted an axis that's somewhere besides the center of mass. So what do we do? So this is where the parallel axis theorem comes in. So using the parallel axis theorem, which states that the moment of inertia of an object that is rotating about some axis that isn't the act the through that doesn't pass through the center of mass. You add the moment of inertia of about the center of mass plus this m d squared term, where d is the distance between the new axis of rotation and the center of mass. So this is the moment of inertia about the center of mass. And so let's see an example of this. So we'll start uh, with a Thin rod will derive that moment of inertia about the center of mass. And then we'll use the parallel axis theorem to determine the moment of inertia about a different axis of rotation. Okay, so let's take a thin rod. So here's my thin rod and so the center of mass about this rod would be in the middle of the rod, assuming a uniform uh, density to the rod. So this is going to be the center of mass axis. And let's say our eventual goal is to calculate the moment of inertia about this red axis. So this is target moment of inertia. So first I'm going to calculate the center of mass moment of inertia, and then we'll add this MD squared term where D is this distance between those two axes. And we'll say that this rod has a total length of L.
and mass m. So then this d, the distance between the two axes would be l over 2. Okay, so like I said, let's determine the moment of inertia about the center of mass. So we can write down this formula. And we want to integrate that. So instead of using dm, so because this is a thin rod, that means it doesn't have any dimensions in, let's say that it's oriented like this, and this is the x, y directions, then there's only, the mass is only distributed in the x direction and none in the y or in the z direction. So in that case, we can rewrite our mass as the as lambda times the distance x, where lambda is the uh, maybe I'll call it distance r, where lambda is the um, line density. of the rod, which is just equal to m over l if lambda is constant. OK, so all that to say that if lambda is constant, dm equals lambda dr. So we can replace this dm with lambda dr. So if we integrate both sides, so if we want to go along the whole length of this rod, we'll go from negative l over 2 to l over 2. So the center of mass is, we can, this lambda term we said was constant, so we can pull it out of the integral. And then the integral of r squared is r cubed over 3 from negative l over 2 to l over 2. So plugging those limits of integration in, we get lambda over 3 times l over 2 cubed minus negative l over 2. So doing those cubes, we get L cubed over 8 minus negative L cubed over 8. So that's 2 L cubed over 8. So the 2 and the 8 cancel to give a 4 on the bottom. And then we've got lambda L cubed over 12. Lambda, we remember, was m over l, m over l times l cubed over 12. So the l on the bottom cancels with 1 on the top, leaving 2. So we get m l squared over 12. So that's the center of mass of, or the moment of inertia about the center of mass. But we wanted to find the moment of inertia about the end of the rod, not the center of mass of the rod. So now, let's redraw our picture. So we found the center of mass moment of inertia was ML squared over 12 but we want 
the moment of inertia about this point shifted L over two away. So the total moment of inertia will be the center of mass plus mt squared. So that's ml squared over 12 plus the distance is L over two squared. So that's ml squared over 12 plus m l squared over four. So that's m l squared over 12 plus three m l squared over 12, which is four m l squared over 12, which reduces to m l squared over three. So that's your final answer for the moment of inertia about this axis on the edge of the rod. So the, the parallel axis theorem is a powerful tool because it allows you to calculate the moment of inertia easily because the it's easy to calculate the moment of inertia about the center of mass. And then you can just shift that axis over using the parallel axis theorem. Uh, and it makes your doing your calculus and doing those calculations much easier. This has been a Dr. Strassbau lecture. Keep the credentials. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications.